Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'd like to welcome you to today's broadcast of Between Friends. And I appreciate your time, so thank you for joining me. I know many of us are iced in or snowed in. I'm in Dallas, Texas, and well, I'm home in, in the suburbs, and boy, I am definitely iced in. I, I said to my husband, if you had to get to the emergency room, I don't think you could get there, and I don't think an ambulance could get to us, but hopefully we won't have to do that. Look at what Shirley Burling in Lockport, Illinois is doing. She's stitching the on the house uh, bowl koozies and she says that she's obsessed with them and making them for a craft show. I can relate. Aren't they fun? Great way to use up layer cakes, you know, those 10 inch squares or 10 and a half inch squares that we can buy pre-cut. Also, you know, just a great way to be a scrap buster or you know, to just decorate your uh, kitchen with beautiful bowl koozies that maybe match your china, your everyday plates, what have you. Uh, let's see. So, And Kay, you're up in Missouri and you're getting a lot of sewing done because it's icy. You're working on an applique quilt for a great grandbaby. Well, you know, I'm just eight weeks away from being a grandmother again. So I'm so excited too. And you have a grandbaby. Kay, let us know how many grandchildren and grandbabies you have. And Judy Warren, hmm, aloha, we love hearing from you. She's in sunny Hawaii. Good for you, good for you. It is pretty here. And I mean, you know, it's really lovely to see our, um, the winter weather that we don't get an awful lot of in Texas. But, you know, it is a little um, unsettling for us Texans because we don't have sand and we don't have salt for the roads to be treated. I mean, we have some, some sand but um, not to cover every road and most certainly not like they do up north. Oh my goodness. So, uh, and Terry Freeman, you're up in PA and you're expending, expecting ice and snow today. So what are you all working on besides one, you know, the grandbaby quilt, an applique quilt, and also the koozies. Let us know in the comments what you're working on. Today, we're gonna, I'm gonna catch you up with some stuff that um, is new at Dime or new to you maybe and how about last week with Roy Garland was that fun uh we received so many nice comments about Roy's visit here at Between Friends and he's just delightful sharing all of his knowledge and, and his artistic talent he's my go-to expert for sure so um I was happy to share him with you let's see Kathy you're working on a Celtic table runner very nice Gnome applique for Ginger Frazier. And uh, Sandy, you're working on Sue's St. Patrick's Day mug rug. Love that. The mug rugs, they are popular, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Really, really popular. I, and I can see why, because they're easy to make and it's, you know, a feeling of accomplishment pretty quick, pretty darn quick for sure. And J.D. Cougar, you say Roy was fantastic. I agree. He really was. He was a whole lot of fun. Um, and Diana Mullins Atkinson, you're working on a new reverse applique quilt while waiting for the snow to begin. Now, I know Diana Mullins Atkins, and she actually loves that cold weather. She lives in Illinois, so she just embraces that snow. I don't know about the ice, but definitely the snow. Okay, so let's see. Elizabeth Bragging, you're using your new dime snap hoop to finish up a quilt in the hoop. Oh, I'm finishing up my baby quilt. I'm using a snap hoop monster and I'm, and I'm doing custom quilting and I'll share that with you next week. I'm doing custom quilting on the blocks and I'm also doing, um, you know, a walking foot quilting. But one thing I've learned when you want to do custom quilting and mix, you know, uh, uh, walking foot quilting, it's best to stitch in the ditch around the big blocks just to kind of anchor it. Even though I used my, pool noodle method for basting my quilt and it all worked out fine. I found it's just easier if you do it like that. So, so much fun. Let's see. Amy McCarthy, you're using those new fonts in the latest Word Art and Stitches software update. You love the Celtic font. Well, we're going to be um, showing that in just a little bit. Nice to have you here, Amy. Hi, Teresa Stagliano from New Jersey. It's another Jersey girl. You gotta love that. And please, a magnetic snap hoop for the Bernina. You're begging? Me too. And we're working on it. Fingers crossed. It's in testing now. 
It has about 700 hours of testing on it. We've got 300 more to go. And when we get that A+, plus, we'll get it on the market to you. So fingers crossed. Okay. Where are we going to start? Where are we going to start? Oh, we're going to start um, right here. Our special this week is Color Play Thread. That's what's Threadtastic for Thursday today is these really cool collections, these small kits, right? It's just five spools of thread that are combined with a exquisite medley or variegated thread, and it's four solid components. How cool is that? So when you get the medley thread, all that pretty variegated, and then you also have those four spools that you can use as accents or even, you know, uh, large features in whatever embroidery design you are selecting. And we named these mini collections after popular cities like the Carmel Collection and the Sedona and the Logan, that's Logan, Utah. And then we have the Rio, never been to Rio, but we think it's colorful. Um, and then Paris, those golden hues. Think of, you know, romantic evenings in Paris. I always think of, you know, a beautiful candlelight, street lights, that kind of thing. And uh, what is the next one? Oh, I can't read it. Isn't that horrible? Oh, I'm so old now. Okay. Madison. That, oh, I should know that. Madison. Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, just a beautiful city. You know, I often think of Madison as being very green, but it also it has beautiful flowers in Madison. So that's where our inspiration was from there. Cape Town is a just a beautiful combination of strong colors in, in the sense it has a very light beige, but then it has that beautiful deep, deep brown and uh, an orchid and orange. And then the Nashville collection, we had to name those blues after um, Nashville, Tennessee. The Miami, just, you know, Miami nights, those pretty pinks. Makes me think of pretty seashells you could find on the beach there. Okay, let's see. Uh, the Carlsbad collection. If you've ever been to Southern California, Carlsbad, Carlsbad is a beautiful um, surf village just north of San Diego. Have fond memories of that place, family vacations. And the Savannah collection is just soft to use, beautiful colors, would accent uh, great use for linens, um, napkins, or even bed linens, and even babies, you know, beautiful, very lovely. And then Seattle, is named after um, the Emerald City up in Washington State, the beautiful foursome of uh, greens. And let's see, Margaret wants to know, are they all polyester? They are all 40 weight polyester. Yes, they are. So they're strong, they have a high sheen, and they are, you know, um, Mm, their color stays forever. I'm drawing a blank there. So let's see. And JD Cougar, you're going to need that one because you live in Washington. Right. Uh, and so Sue Brown showed them last week. Absolutely. She loves our uh, variegated thread. Hi, Sue. She's always playing around with them. So thank you so much for doing that. I, you know, the variegated threads are really fun. And now here's Annette Yeager. She says, maybe you remember Annette Yeager. Many of you uh, we're watching and I shared uh, a photograph of Annette. She works for Dime and she's kind of a newbie to, embro to embroidery. She's been a sewist all her life, but she's been uh, tackling this new embroidery hobby to her over the past year. And she's the one who makes my earrings. Many of you have noticed I'm often wearing um, earring, embroidered earrings and Annette makes an awful lot of them for me and she loves the variegated thread. She's done a great job with them. Thanks Annette, really, really fun. Oh, let's see, Sue Brown, she says Carol, Carl's bat is her favorite. Very cool, very cool. Okay, let's see. Okay, Linda, you wanna know, is if your machine will take the large, so here's what you should, when you're selecting a monster hoop, this is what you should use as your guideline. Think about, what size standard hoop you normally reach for. So just, you know, if you're going to stitch five things in one day, are you going to reach for that five by seven or are you going to reach for that great big eight by 12 or maybe even larger than nine by 14 and so on? Depends on, of course, your machine. And then that's the size that you should get in the monster hoop, in my personal opinion. If you're quilting, get the largest hoop that your machine will take. <coughs> I'm 
not feeling real well. So maybe you'll just bear with me a moment. I'm going to mute my. Okay, so I took a sip of water. And our next um, slide is going to show you our special. Now, these are really reasonably priced. Only $20.75 plus free shipping for these kits that are five spools of thread. And they're all 40 weight, remember? Absolute coordinates. You're going to love that. You're going to just love that. Yeah, so Margaret, you wanted to know uh, if they were on sale. And they sure are. That's their special price today. With um, Use that promo code coordinate to get the free shipping. <clears throat> so the um, last one that I showed you was uh, the Seattle, right? Well, the Seattle is going to be featured in this week's On the House project, which I'm going to show you in a couple moments. But first I want to show you this uh, on the house project that we found out on the web. And this was done by Needle Quirk, who is a big fan of Reen Wilcoxon at Embroidery Garden. And she followed Reen's lead on taking our applique birdhouse and turning it into a lace design. So I thought I would take you into our software and show you how to do that. So I am going to us uh, i have already opened up the um pardon me i have already opened up the applique design so that's what's sitting on my screen and i just now want to um switch my software programs i kind of have this you know roy he's my rocket science scientist right so he sets me up with some pretty good tricks and one of them is how I can isolate my software so I don't confuse you. <clears throat> Thank you, Denise. I hope I'm feeling better too. I've been battling this cold for a week, but you know, getting close to the end. Okay, so here's our applique design. Now this is the free on the house design that you can download over at DZGNS at any time. They're gonna be available all year. It's a free design, one, one free design every week. And last week was the birdhouse design. So it's an applique design and um, I can see that in my software in this lower right hand corner where the um, color sequence is. I see that little word applique. So, but I'm in my lace maker software and if I select that applique, I can click on the icon that will turn it into a lace grid with a border. And there you have it. So now it's no longer applique. It's actually a freestanding lace birdhouse. I'll do the very same thing with the, um, the, the roof so that, you know, I don't want my roof to fall off my lace um, birdhouse. How cool is that? Now, when you see, I can use the stitch simulator and just travel through that design and watch it stitched. I think I do more embroidery in simulation than I do in actual fabric and thread, right? But it's a great way to view a design, see what's going to happen. You can change the order if you want, if you have My Lace Maker. There's so many options you could do. But anyway, isn't that cool? So that's how our friend at Needle Quirks did that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move over to our new software that's going to um, show you how to um, all of the new things that are going on with um, mark, word art and stitches. So let's see, Karen, as we have a question here from Karen and what is she asking? Let's see, since my baby lock doesn't like the thickness on the melons, I was thinking of embroidering them first on fabric and stabilizer and sewing them on as an applique. What stabilizer would you recommend? I would probably recommend the sew and wash, which is going to be a mesh type water soluble stabilizer that you're going to be able to remove because you're not going to want to see that stabilizer. I mean, that's maybe what I would do. I wonder what Deborah Jones would do. I'm not sure. Maybe she would use our, I know, we would use our um, heavy duty water soluble stabilizer. So that's thick. It, it's 
a clear film, but it has a, a heavy body to it. So when you stitch on that, then you are able to just tear it off and then you can sew it onto, sew that applique onto your fabric. So I'm going to switch my software back over, well, not back, but over to Word Art and Stitches so I can show you what's so fun over there. Where do you see what's happening? At Word Art and Stitches. So well, you're probably wondering, well, you know, why did we do that? Well, you know, we like to um, make sure that all of our all of our customers and new customers would enjoy the software and continue to enjoy it. So what we've done is added some brand new features to Word Art and Stitches. Now, Word Art and Stitches is a powerful lettering program with over 200, uh, I think it's actually over like 240 fonts that are in there. And um, we're going to take a look at some of them. And some of the new ones are really going to wow you, like this one on the screen right here. We call this the Taj Mahal. And we've named some of the fonts after famous locations. This one is just so colorful. It thought about, we, it made us think of uh, some of the beautiful imagery that we see from India. So that's why we named it that. So I'm going to um, put a blank screen up and first to introduce you to this new icon that you'll find if you already own Word Art and Stitches, you'll find this new icon in the free update that you could have updated yesterday or still today. <clears throat> so when I click on that, it looks a little boring until I hit open. And then I have one letter, two letter, three letter, choices, four letter, and then name. So there's so much fun stuff. Let's go ahead and start with a one letter. So some of these are very traditional, right? So you could have find a lot of options for your traditional single letter monograms. Normally a single letter is designating the um, last name of a family. Uh, it could also designate the first name of a person, but normally it, it's done in that fashion. So there are so many different ones. So let's just select one and it appears in the wizard. And now, unless your last name is a, you know, or a name like Anderson or Andrews, then you probably would change it. So I'll go ahead and I'll put an R in here for Roach. It immediately changes it, maintains the size. And that's how fast and easy that monogram was. At this point, it's grouped and we can look <clears throat> over here. It's all one element. I can change the colors. I can change the size. I can, and even here, I can change the letter if I want. Let me pull this down, access, there we go. So you have all that different fun stuff to play with. Okay, let's go back into that wizard because there's more to explore for sure. Let's go into the two letter some of these beautiful fonts like let's take a look this one is so elegant very um just beautiful so instead of ma let's do pa how about that peter andrews right and again we can change some of those colors this comes in as a group you can ungroup that you could change those colors if you so desired there's just so many things to see and play with in there it is really an impressive update. Now, we didn't take anything out of WordArt. So if it's this is a program that you already own and love, we haven't taken anything out. We've only added to it. So here are four letters. These, I mean, these are really fun. Now, why would you have a four-letter monogram? Well, you may have a couple who has not taken each other, you know, not taken the last name of one spouse. So maybe they're both like my husband and I, he's PK and I'm ER. So this one would be appropriate for uh, Pete and I. And sometimes you have same sex couples. They don't always take each other's names. So, you know, there's lots of modern day arrangements and it doesn't mean they can't have a monogram, right? So we try to address all of that. And of course, monograms are personal choices and the rules of yesteryear don't really apply anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now look at name. Oh, name is so fun. This is one of my favorites right here. Look how cool this is. So um, let's go ahead and do um, 
uh, let's do Ward as the last name. Uh, no, not there, W, and we'll do Ward, uh, or we'll do Andrew, and we'll do the letter A here. So, uh, you know, I'm only changing it on one side, right? So let's go ahead and change it on two so you can see what would happen. So you can keep this remaining. So if you have a, a couple, you, you know, maybe a woman who wants to kind of keep her maiden name recognized in the family, she, you most certainly could do that there. But, you know, there's just so many different options, so much fun. And they don't all have to be used for, um, oh, look at this adorable one. Talk about grandma. Isn't that cool, right? So here we have twins that were born in 1964 and then Tracy in 67, Chris in 70 and on and on. You can change each of these dates and personalize that to make a um, gift for either yourself or, or <clears throat> your mom. So let's see, Anne wants to know, does this work on a Mac? It most certainly does work on a Mac. All Dime software works on a Mac without any additional purchase. There is a product um, that you have to download from our website called the Mac Translator. And once you install that on your computer, then all Dime software works on it. Mm -hmm. And so the update is to Word Art and Stitches. It is, uh, that's the program that we've updated. So if you've purchased that in the past, you you'll that free update is available to you and if it's a program that you'd like to purchase you most certainly can do that it's over on our website <clears throat> okay so what else do we want to show you well there's some funny little um fonts up here so let's go ahead and do um so why this came up is that was the last font that was selected so Let's say scroll through all the fonts and you'll see there are really quite a number of fun fonts. There's applique fonts, puffy foam fonts. There's some really cool scripts. We have um, some very nice run stitch like for um, that you can use for medley thread or just a solid thread, but really pretty scripts, very delicate. I like that one. I'm pretty excited about that new one. Okay, but let's just, you know, we'll go boring. We'll go um, <laughs> right over to, uh, let's say, Arial, because this is a great one to show. I want to show you this new feature. So I'm going to do all caps, and I'm going to spell sphere, and I'm going to enlarge that a little bit. And when I have my text tool engaged, you'll notice that this icon comes up, and then I have the ability to pick from three different new features, and one is sphere. So you can see now that the text is wrapping around a cylinder. Isn't that cool? So it, it's different than an envelope where it makes the ends of the text taller or shorter. This is actually wrapping it around, giving it a 3D effect. Gee, I, I really like that. So. But if you don't like it, you just undo it. It's that easy. So again, with the text tool engaged, I'll then go back to the warp feature. And now we'll select um, wave. Now wave is really fun. Look at this. See how that lettering is actually waving? I love that. So I will play with this just a little bit. We'll copy and paste, move it over. And select that again. And then we can just kind of play with it as much as we want. You know, you can get them to copy and paste, duplicate each other, or go, you know, however different you want. Isn't it fun? Now, I love the animation, the movement that you can get in text with <clears throat> that feature. All right, let's go to a new screen. And this time, let's type in perspective. I wonder if I can spell it. There we go. And, um, I, you know, I like to enlarge stuff. So it's kind of really gives you some detail. And again, with the text tool engaged, <coughs> I'll, then that uh, opens the warp option. And then I can do perspective lower. And I can also 
copy and paste and do the opposite. How cool is that? Isn't that neat? I love that. Now, isn't I just think it's just phenomenal how you can do this. Now, if I wanted to, um, I'm going to pull that out of there. I, I'm going to see if I can make this happen because I should have practiced this before I got on camera because I played with this a while ago. But let's see, we'll do it again. So we'll type out perspective. And I'm going to get rid of this one. And what I want to do is make it look mirror image, which I have done have done this. So I think I go like that. And then um, yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, we knew that, right? Okay. Well, that'll be in next week's class, right? <laughs> that'll be in next week's class, because I did play with that. And I had that all down. And of course, that was a week ago. You know how that stuff goes, right? Okay, what else do I want to show you? How about if we do a little text on path? So again, um, I'm going to select the text tool. And now this time, <clears throat> we're going to write over the river and, oh, over the riff, right? Over the river and through the woods, the grandmother's house we go. All right. And we'll hit apply. Now that's a long string of text, right? So that's okay, though. No harm in that. Then I'm going to select the um, the pen, and I'm just going to draw a curvy line, just because I kind of like to do that. It's fun, super easy. I'm using the um, grid as a guide, and you know, goodness, I'm not really nailing it down, totally aligned or anything like that. And, and there are ways to do that, and I should be doing that, but I'm not doing it right now. So now with, um, if I select both features, now you'll see that a new icon on the screen appears, this text on path. Of course, we always had text on path before. It's just that now we've added an icon at the top of the toolbar that makes it easier to access. So when I do that, there's my text on path. And we'll click off. Now, this problem, my line. So let's undo that. What happened was, I mean, it's working for sure. But let's undo it. And then this time, I'm going to take my curvy line and make it not as curvy. And then when we hit text on path, look how cool that is, right? All right, let's get rid of that grid. <laughs> and let's zoom in so you can see it. That works out pretty well though. So we have a little bit of adjustment to do, but that's actually <clears throat> very easy in this software. I have kerning tools here, these little blue diamonds that allow me to move all the letters that are to the right of the diamond. I can of course move each individual letter also. And you know, when you use text on path and you are moving text around curves or corners of a shape, you're gonna to have to do a little work on the kerning to make it satisfied, but um, it's so much fun. Oh my goodness, I love that. That's really an awful lot of fun. So what else do we wanna show you? Well, let's take a look at some of those new fonts that are in there. Um, <clears throat> for instance, we can take a look at the new color play one, which is, I just, we designed this specifically for that beautiful medley thread that we have. So let's go ahead and write um, oh, medley, let's, let's write medley. And that appears on the screen. Now it's not showing in medley, but I most certainly can do that. I can go to my palette of thread and select medley. Where is my exquisite medley? Here it is. And from that, I'll go ahead and pick that Seattle. And there you have that beautiful lettering. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can get a really good look. 
at how these running stitches are separated by just a millimeter so that the thread does not lay on top of the previous run, but allows that medley thread to really be visible on each run. So see, as, I'm, as the needle travels, see how it is not stitching directly on top of the previous pass? It is just stitching right next to it. I love that. Okay, and so can we fix the kerning here? You bet. We just pull those blue diamonds. We can move all of these, and we most certainly could even do it in the properties box by doing like a negative 10. Let's see what that does. That'll pull them together a little tighter. And for some reason, it popped it back into that color. But isn't that beautiful? And so you'll get to know those um, features of the software as you use it and play with it. It is awesome. Just awesome. And then I also wanted to show you, let's get rid of that. I'll show you um, a couple <clears throat> large new fonts that we have. We have a jumbo font. I hope that I can identify it really quickly. Mm -hmm. It's a stunning, here it is. Well, there it's named Jumbo Fair. We have two, Jumbo Fairmont and Jumbo Ritz. So let's go ahead and look at the Ritz first. And you'll notice this design is 7.8 inches in height and 5.10 inches in width. So that is a big, beautiful font. It's a very vertical font, so it will look great in monograms, and that's its intention. And it has a fill. That red thread that you see is a fill. And then these are satins, beautiful satins, but it's that fill that gives you the good coverage that you need, like on a terry cloth towel. So we designed it specifically for that. So now let's go back and Let's switch over to the Jumbo Fairmont. Now, this is a little bit different. It's a beautiful wide satin, as you can see, that it just covers that beautiful spance of uh, satin column. And it's outlined with a contrasting thread of just a run stitch. It's a very delicate. So, I mean, it's, the satin's not that delicate, but the outline is. So even though it's large, now this is seven inches tall, um, I would use this on uh, maybe a pillow sham, like a European sham or pillow, you know, uh, pillowcases and uh, bedding. I, you could use it on terry cloth, but I think it would be best on, on a linen. So much fun, these fonts. And let's take a look. We do have a, a one for Mylar that I wonder if I can find, because <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't, I don't think, oh, we did, we named it Mylar. My goodness, we're getting smart. Okay, isn't that, so this has that fill in um, the center. So let's go ahead and, and scroll through that. You're going to first see an outline, and that outline shows you where you would lay down your Mylar material. It's like that film, you know, that, opalescent film. And then the next color is going to do a low complex fill. Notice there's no underlay. Roy taught us about that last week. Remember, you don't want to see that underlay. So let's just take that down and then you will, you know, the machine will stop and you'll tear away the mylar and then you'll do those final beautiful satin stitches. And that is one elegant mylar letter. Now that's not tall. That's only the height of that is two and a half inches. And of course, if you own the software, you can enlarge these designs. You want to be a little careful um, in enlarging them, but you know you can go really pretty large. What you want to watch out for is your satins, but this is a narrow satin, so you could most certainly make this. I mean, let's exaggerate it and um, and change this into five inches, so you can see what happens to the design because you're in our software and you are adjusting the native format of the design, you can stitch that at five inches, no matter what Roy tells you. <laughs> so let's see how, Donna wants to know how far apart are the color changes on the variegated thread? You know, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I could make some up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Yeah, and let's see, Not A Brat One. Oh, I like that name, Not A Brat One. I can't seem to bring up the comments. 
I don't know why under the screen, the mouse is, I think because it's engaged with my software. So let's pop the software out for a minute, Sam. See if I could bring some comments up on screen. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Sue says that's a um, fantastic font for the medley. And um, and you want to try this. You love the color play, not a brat. That's what I like, your name. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. And Donna Sabran, I, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I thought that our variegated thread was stitched in a variety of widths, that it's not actually in a specific manner. But um, the more I stitch it, the more I think it is, you know, kind of consistent. So, but I don't have that answer for you. But you know what? I'll, I'll dig around. I mean, not dig around. I'll ask Deborah Jones, our uh, consumable products manager, and she will let me know. I want to answer Jeffrey Frazier's um, question. So he says, do you still sell the snap hoop monster that's four times stronger? Well, Jeffrey, that's the only hoop that we sell. So many years ago, we our first magnetic hoop was snap hoop, and that had a white top. And it's we learned an awful lot um, at, after you know through the life of that product, and we improved the, that product to be four times as strong as as its original form, the white top. And so we changed our packaging and uh, the new packaging. And now that new packaging is about five years old. So the new packaging has the teal hoop on the top and it says four times stronger. But, you know, we discontinued that white hoop, little snap hoop. So eventually we removed the term four times stronger from all packaging. If you see packaging that has four times strong on it, just know that that box is old. It's still a, you know, a strong hoop. And maybe you have seen that image on the web. And boy, that's something we can't fix. I mean, it's not on our website, but you know, the web is a really big place. So that it's just a misleading thing. Something that we learned in the life of our company, never put for, you know, the word, and never put ER on the end of anything, right? Because people will always want that stronger thing, that bigger thing. And if they don't know what you're referring to, you know, they'll think, oh, we've reverted back to an original, but we haven't. I hope that uh, that clarifies that. I hope that clarifies you that. Oh, let's see, Judy Whitaker. Oh my goodness, she's using her Snap Hoop Monster for the first time on her Stellar right now. Now, Judy, I know your work. I know Judy from here, Facebook Live. She has done our Small Town Charms. She's done our Dime Doors. That was in 20, 21, 20, yeah, 20 and 21. So um, I'm surprised that you've never used a Snap Hoop Monster on your uh, Stellaire. So I don't know if you're new to Snap, or Snap Hoop Monster or if you're new to the Stellaire. I'd like to know that. So anyway, your work is beautiful. And I think you're going to get the same results that you've enjoyed all along. And you'll get that with that combo, the Snap Hoop Monster and the Stellaire. So, so fun. Okay. So what else do we want to show you in the software? <laughs> Well, you know, there's just, so many of you are familiar with, uh, we, we've added some new charms. So I call them charms. Many of us, so brackets and frames, you will find in the monogram designs icon. Look at all the new brackets and frames you're going to find. We've added dozens of new frames. We've updated them. We kept the old favorites in there, but we've added quite a few because we know that um, many times we have a go-to design that we uh, have confidence in or we're familiar with it, or maybe we're matching, you know, a, an existing project and you just want to stay in that same style. But we have really added an awful lot. So that's what you're going to, that's monogram designs. And that icon is right here. And then we have text designs. And I call text designs charms. You know, many of you know that term, right? They're small designs that you use to accent monograms or, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. 
So like, you know, it's a girl, it's a boy, a baby rattle, ladybug. So there's some new ones in here. There's a really cool crown and a crab and, you know, and you're probably wondering why a crab? Well, you know, if you live in the Chesapeake area or, you know, anywhere along the coast, you might want to decorate some of your uh, kitchen linens with those types of things. And we have um, some holidays and, you know, the ever present pineapple palm and a uh, pineapple, a adorable seahorse, you know, lots of fun things you're going to find in this software. I am just delighted with all the changes that we've made. Okay, Jeffrey, I cleared it up. Yay. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. You know, boy, we learn an awful lot. When you run a company, you think that it's, well, there's lots of things to consider, but you know, the web is a big place. So once you get some kind of marketing out there, it lives out there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And Betty Turner, you use your snap hoop monsters regular more than your regular hoops. I agree. So do I. I, I sometimes I can't find my regular hoops. I rarely use them. Really? Oh, and Denise, yeah, blue crabs are wonderful steamed here in Maryland. You bet. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see. Um, Kelly Hipkins, is this your newbie? Welcome to uh, either the hobby or this episode, you know, or to our page on Facebook Live. I'm not sure what you're a newbie to, but either way, I hope you enjoy um, your endeavor. So uh, is this new software? Well, this is um, software that Dime has sold for quite a while. It's called Word Art and Stitches, but we just updated it, you know, and that's the beauty of software that you buy at Dime. It is updated for free for life. Now, I want to clarify the term update. So update is our commitment to the update is that we'll, we will remain compatible with Microsoft and Mac operating systems forever. So when Microsoft comes out with Windows 12, you know, we will be compatible. When um, Apple comes up with a new operating system, we will be compatible. And in fact, we've received those new platforms from both Apple and Microsoft about six months before they're released to, the, to all of us users. And our development team makes sure that our software is up to speed. And by the time the uh, Microsoft and Apple release the platform, our software works. So that's what it means to be free updates for life. But occasionally, we also add some wonderful freebies into the software that we just want to kind of stir a little of excitement or reward our customers for using the software. And that's what we've just done this week with Word Art and Stitches. So that's why it's so new. And, you know, it's just, oh, you know, it's just a really fun lettering program. And here's Margaret Jones Starr, who I've never met, but she says she bought it many years ago, and it is the easiest word collage out there. So let's go take a look at that. Thank you very much. I almost forgot. Okay, so Word Art and Stitches has this icon here at the top that looks like a bubble with an F in the middle of it. And when you click on it, it's going to take you to the bubble text menu. And I can click on the ellipse right next to um, that image, and I will come up with tons and tons of different shapes that I can fill with um, words. So let's go ahead and do that boot, shall we? So my choices, I can right here. I control can control my size. I can also control what type of outline I want. Do I want to just keep it as artwork so that it won't really stitch and it's just going to put words into that shape? Or do I want a run, a steel, or an applique? So I'm going to just do a run for this. And the first thing you want to do is um, select the, the words, my text, and write in your own words. So I'll do which I'll spell that correctly. Now to separate words, I will keep, um, I'll just hit the, a space on the keyboard. And if I want to keep two words together, then I will use this little accent that is next to the digit one on your keyboard. 
And now when a Happy Halloween is portrayed in the boot, it will always be together. And so here we'll do boo and we'll do spooky and that's enough. Now I have some choices here on how I wanted to display. It can be all horizontal words. It could be all vertical, orthogonal, which means any, any of those directions or um, what well, orthogonal means horizontal and vertical. So let's go ahead and choose that one. And now I have block combinations, uh, I mean font combinations, block, elegant, fun, or script. These are preset. Now you can make your own by changing your palette. I mean, creating a new font combo right here. So let's go ahead and do one. So I can um, have Arial Small there and let's just call it um, Spooky. And then I'll hit the plus button and now I can add some other fonts to it. So let's do ball house and click OK. And then I can add another one and maybe three. So we'll kind of do maybe this one here. I'm not really even sure what that is going to look like. And then we'll just say OK. And and now um, these are some settings that you can play with, but I usually just leave them as is. Here you have palettes that have already been um, preset, but you can also make your own same way. You would select uh, and call it, we'll call it spooky. And we'll hit the plus sign and that's gonna take me to my palette. And I could do an orange and then I'll do another one and we'll do, oh, well, Sue Brown's in the house. So we gotta do a purple. Where is purple? I don't know, we're, oh, here's purple, goodness, okay. And then let's do another one. And we'll do a um, brown, a nice brown. How about that? We'll do those three colors. Okay, <clears throat> decor combo. These are little tiny symbols that you can use. And I thought I had a bat in here, but I don't. So you know what, I'll just, I'll just do none. So now we'll hit apply. And there you have it. They starts putting in the words. Now, every time I hit apply, it's going to change it and I can't go back. So if you like it, you fall in love, stick with it, baby. <laughs> there we go. That's a fun one. Now we'll hit okay. And it comes in, it's all grouped. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna get rid of that grid. But isn't that just the coolest thing ever? Now, what, what can I do? Well, it's grouped. So the first thing I wanna do is ungroup it. So I just right click, select, right click. Now I can select each individual thing. And in here, I could change the uh, name, the word, you know, the letters, the characters. I could change the colors. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll put some pink in there. How about that? And we'll make that pink so that you can see the changes that I made. You could change the font, you could do whatever. Isn't that the coolest thing? That is just the coolest thing. Okay, so let's see. All right, what else can we show you? So now this could have been an applique, right? How cool is that? Hey, you know what else is really fun in this software? Oh, this, and speaking of grandmoms, boy, I really am talking like a grandmom these days. But anyway, there is, in your library, right? So down here in the properties box in the software, there's a tab that is designs. It will take you to your library. And the um, Word, Art and Stitches comes with these subway tiles. Look how cool these are. So Maggie, oh my goodness. Now, you know, I'm not gonna have a, uh, a baby named Maggie that I want to celebrate that was born in 2014. But, you know, well, I'll leave the name Maggie since I don't know the new name. But I do know that my new grandchild is going to be born in 22, right? So let me put this down a little bit so I have a little bit more space to work. There we go. So I can just change that just like that, just like that. And I do know it's going to be in April. So I can change that. And since we don't know this, let's go ahead and put a question mark there. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't really stitch this, but isn't that awesome? Isn't that just the most fun thing ever? I don't know if the baby's going to be eight ounces, but you know, let's say it's going to be seven. Uh, 
its mother was, well, its mother was actually eight ounces. I should say her mother, because we do know it's a girl. She was seven pounds, eight ounces. So you can customize, make all those changes yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that awesome? So let's see. Uh, Diana wants to know, is there an upgrade uh, or are there YouTube videos on this software? Absolutely. You know, we have a Facebook group, Inspiration Software, uh, which is a Facebook group. You just, you know, search for a dime inspiration software on Facebook and you can join uh, where you get approved right away. And you have access to other people who love the software and our educators are in there helping all, all the time. So, um, you know, it's a great resource for people to uh, learn the software. We do have YouTube videos, but you know what else we have? We have in the software itself. So let's share our, our software again. And I'm going to show you where my cursor is hovering. So you, do you see that tiny little text box that comes up? It says monogram wizard. It's identifying the tool. And it also says to press F2 on my key, keyboard to access a video. So we have in-app videos that teach you how to use each tool. And they are being updated all the time. We have a team that is working on them. So if you don't have, you know, if there's not a video today, there will be, I'm not going to say tomorrow, but very soon. So we're using that all the time. And let's see, Natalie Bush, you're asking, where is that? I think maybe you're asking about the subway. And so that is on the second tab in the properties box. Do you see how at the very bottom lower corner of the screen here, there's a, a what looks like a book, a, like a library book. And when you hover your cursor over there and click on it, it will access your library of designs. Uh, it, you know, it knows how to do that. So if you click the box, I mean the crosshair next to the designs, here's all the designs that are loaded into this root folder that, you know, is created when you install the software. And Subway is one of those um, folders. <coughs> Excuse me. So we did the we did the beautiful baby girl one, right? And of course, we have one for a boy. So let's take a look at that. You know, it's pretty sexist, right? Looks just like daddy and so forth. But you know, when they're born, that's kind of what we you know lean towards. So, but we could change this. Looks just like daddy. I mean, looks just like mommy. So you have to ungroup. Because I love that term. Um, I love that term that says tiny fingers and toes and tiny fingers and tiny toes. I think that's just adorable. So let's go ahead and we'll change that to mommy. I, I can resize it so it fits in there, right? I could, you know, if I don't like the, the um, rattle, I could change that out and get rid of the rattle and maybe put balloons in there or something in that manner. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and look at some of the others that we have, like for a new homeowner. Love builds a happy home. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. And because, you know, we're talking about grandmoms. You know, how lovely is this, right? A nice memento for a child, for um, a grandchild. They're just a blast. Absolutely. This is um, one to commemorate a, a wedding. And they look great on you know, as wall decor, as pillows, you know, a, a table runner. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, let's see. Connie says you, you can't wait for your um, ice to melt so you can get out to your sewing cabin to update your software. Oh, well, my software goes with me all the time. <laughs> I don't know what I would do in an ice storm if I didn't have a computer, right? Well, I would sew, but um, yeah, pretty much chain to that computer. Love to play with all this stuff. Okay. Isn't that fun? Didn't we have a blast? There's so much to see in Word, Art, and Stitches. But hey, I know many of you are waiting to find out what the On the House project is. So let me get a sip of water. Mm. Okay. So we, I showed you in My Lace Maker how our friend Needle Quirks changed her software. So now let's go ahead and take a look at 
our new uh, design for this month, which is the hot potato bag, the hot potato microwave bag. So it's a simple project that you can do, but isn't that cute little design, the hot potato um, adorable? So actually we could, maybe we'll just jump back to software real quick, Sam, so I can show them the design. There we go. This is the design that, you're, that you get when you download. And I use that um, forest green medley thread to stitch the hot potato text. Now this is not really text. I drew this. So it's not a font. I drew that and then added um, that little shamrock. And then all the splattering of shamrocks are done in the complementary colors of that variegated thread. So you're going to see this um, like silver green, the neon green, the Christmas green, and then hedge is that last dark one. So that's the free design. Now I did this so that let me go into the color sequence so you can get a good look at how you would do it. If you don't want to use the words hot potato, well, you can just delete that. You can just skip it and you could take out this shamrock and you can even remove that outline and remove that outline. And then you just have really pretty borders that you could then go and copy and paste and make a long continuous border. Now I'm going to mirror image this so that they connect kind of, sort of, right? And then we'll do the same thing on this side and we'll mirror image that. Oh no, I guess I didn't need to do that. Whoops. Now this will fill a, you know, big hoop, but you could put whatever you want there. Happy St. Patrick's day, kiss me. I'm Irish. What have you, you could put whatever you wanted there, but, that's why I love software. I because my goodness, you start with something simple and what you can build and do with it from there is just absolutely amazing. So I'm just going back to the original design so you can see everything that you will get when you download it. Oh, it's mad at me now. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so it'll be there. Let's go back to PowerPoint uh, so you can see the design. All right, now, how do we make that hot potato bag? Let's see. Um, you're going to start with an 11 by 21 inch piece of fabric. This is going to be your outer fabric. You're going to hoop it so that you can uh, embroider as close to the edge as you can, close to the edge as you can, right? And centered in this long vertical space. And then when you take it out of the hoop, trim it off leaving about a quarter or a half inch of seam allowance at the bottom of the design, just trim off this excess. And then you're going to layer that embroidered fabric right side up. You'll lay that on top of the batting and you will then take your lining fabric wrong side up. So right sides together, right? So you'll, you know, the embroidered fabric is a right side up. You'll take the lining right side down, make a sandwich. And then you will stitch um, at the at short edges. You will stitch these two short edges and then turn right side out. And then I quilted it. Now you don't have to quilt it. Many people don't quilt it. It's not necessary to quilt it, but I did stitches that are about three quarters of an inch uh, apart, just running stitches, you know, the width of the quilt. And then we turn it up four and a half inches. You take the embroidered edge and turn it over on itself four and a half inches. And then you will, um, here we have it in not just an illustration. So um, is that right? Um, let's see. I have, I have kind of one right here to show you how we do it. So we're going to, you know, here we are. Why did that show? And there we go. Okay, so this is eventually going to be my top, right? We want it to be like so. So this is how it would be finished. And, of course, it would be sewn on the side. So I've already edge stitched my short ends, and I've marked my fabric. Uh, at the four and a half inch mark, and then five and a half inches from the bottom edge. Now, all these instructions are included. So then we're going to fold it up. This is from the right side. And, and now actually see, we're gonna take the, the top. 
we want the top, we want to fold that one down first, and then we'll fold this one up at those marks. And then you will sew these side seams. So sew right down. And then you'll just turn it all right side out and um, you'll, it, it'll be fine. Now, let's see. Uh, Rosemary says, because this is in the microwave, don't you have to use cotton thread, cotton fabric, and cotton batting? Well, you definitely you should use cotton thread, not thread, but a batting and also fabric. But I can tell you that oh, my camera doesn't seem to want to reset. What do I do about that, Sam? Oh, that's kind of weird. It's mad at me because I did that with the fabric. <clears throat> I don't know if that'll come back in. Okay, so what I what I've learned about this is um, I have microwaved with polyester thread, and I've had no problems. Poly the polyester thread has a pretty high heat tolerance. Polyester batting has a lower heat tolerance, so that's why you wouldn't use that. But you know, it's not unlike um, flammable materials that we already use in the microwave, which are paper towels and napkins, right? So you have to use caution, even if you're using 100% cotton, even if you don't embroider on your quilted fabric um, with any kind of, with polyester thread, and you put it in the microwave, you're gonna have to use caution. Don't put it in there for 10 or 15 minutes and leave the house, right? You know, it, it, it gets hot, so be careful. But you know, this is some, I mean, I didn't invent the microwave potato bag. This has been out forever. But I, I do use it in, in my microwave and I've embroidered on it and it's beautiful. I love it. And it makes a really fluffy, fluffy baked potato in a fraction of the time than it does uh, in the oven. So that's what's so great about it for sure. Okay. So once you have it all, um, you know, sewn together and there you have that pretty side is... Uh, the flap that is, you know, of course it's captured at the outer edges and then you just, it's, you know, it, it, you just open it up like a wide mouth and then put the potatoes inside. Now you don't pierce the potato or potatoes. Um, you just put it into the bag and according to your microwave, you know, everybody's is different. I put mine in I put like a single potato. My husband and I, we just split a potato and, um, we put one in for three minutes and then I check it and I put it back in for three minutes. And sometimes I might have to do a total of eight minutes for one very large russet. But um, you you know your microwave, you know what size potatoes you like to use. So that will be your guideline for sure. So it's super fun. Uh, and I think it's, you know, just in time for St. Patrick's Day, those shamrocks can't go wrong with pretty shamrocks for sure. Yeah, let's see. And yeah, Chris Yost. She said this in the bowl, crazy, cr crazy, cozy will make great Christmas presents. And, you know, my friend Rosemary, we made a soup bowl koozies and we embroidered on that. Oh, they were beautiful. And that's a free design that's still on the website. And um, that we had no issues at all with that. So definitely. Let's see. What did my friend here say? Uh, no, not a brat. I love that. She made a bowl koozie with cotton thread and batting. She embroidered with polyester rayon and viscose threads, which she had, in, had on hand. Didn't have any problem. Right. It, yeah, definitely. The polyester batting, I would not use because it does have a lower heat melt, but thread, not so much. Okay. So what else do we have? Well, next week, we have some fun stuff happening here. We're going to have a guest who um, is going to join us, Reen Wilcoxon. I know so many of you know her and I'm excited to bring her back. And we're gonna continue this chat about thread and uh, because Reen does a really great job of selecting threads. And I said, well, hey, let's just, what have you been working on? She's got some new spring projects that she's gonna share, but we're going to do it at a different time. It's not going to be on Thursday. It's going to be on Tuesday. And you're probably wondering why. Well, I'm going to be out of town and throwing a baby shower for my daughter um, out of town. So that's why we moved the uh, Facebook Live Between Friends broadcast to Tuesday. So if you want to stay notified, we have an easy way for you to do that. This is a great steps for you to take so that you won't miss a broadcast.
We want to make sure you are being notified every time we go live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. And here's a quick tutorial on how you can set up your live notifications. First, on your home page, click on the search button. Look for us. Click on the three little dots on our page. A pop-up will appear. Select on manage follow settings. Click on live videos and enable notifications. Make sure they're all set to all. Now you're all set. Isn't that great? So I hope that you'll join me. Now we did have one question from uh, Cassie Purdy. So she's got a Mac update and uh, she wants to know, how else can we find out what is new for the update? Well, if you already own Word Art and Stitches, you'll be receiving an email from Dime or maybe it's already gone out listing the changes that were uh, included in your software. But best way to find out, open up the software and play around. Absolutely. That, I mean, it's just so fun. You can't break software. Can't break software. So let's see. Thank you so much for joining me today. That was a lot of fun. I hope you'll take advantage of that special that's on Color Play. Remember, five spools for just $20.75. You get the medley and the four coordinating solids. I think you'll be really happy with each one. Any one that you choose is going to bring you a lot of joy in your sewing room. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you on Tuesday at 1 o'clock.